I'm home caught, it's dead in trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? I'm home caught, it's dead in trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? They ain't believing me in the beginning. Who wanna hang around now they see me winning? I'm home caught, it's dead in trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Court, from the Holding Court Podcast, and today's episode is sponsored by none other than Rap Noodles. You already know what it is, the classic icon ramen noodles. You know what I'm saying? This is the creamy chicken gumbo flavor, one of my personal favorites. So, you know, we grew up in the hood eating noodles, you know what I mean? But we talking about ramen. Forget ramen. Get your rap noodles, you know what I'm saying? So, it's no limit to our success. You already know what it is. Be body body, ride and ride it with the rap icon, rap noodles. You already know what it is, salute. What's up world, it's your boy Big Court here at the Holding Court Podcast with the beautiful, incomparable, award-winning actress, Jasmine Lewis. Yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah, hi. You see that? Did you like that? I did, it was so good. That was some ghetto Johnny Carson shit. A little ghetto, a little um, Jay Leno. In Jay Leno? Too. A little bit. But I, I like it. I don't it. have the chin. No, thank God. Nor do I have the money or the cars. Or that. Yeah. But, you know, we take what we get. Okay. Is that what you do? You take what you can get? No, I get a or lot. Or you take what you can take. I take what I can take. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't got to bust me out right yet. <laughs> we, we've been in this show one minute. <laughs> we ain't got to talk about it yet, dude. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Man, I, uh, I appreciate you coming. Um you and I uh, have become dear friends, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, of course, I had to have you roll through here. I appreciate um, it. I don't think that you get the credit that you deserve in Hollywood. You know? Really? I do. I oh, do. Wow. And I'm not saying that from a, a, a personal place because I know you to be a, a great person, yeah. a great human being. But your talent is phenomenal. And the fact that you are able to perform at a high level in a male-dominated business so even on the business side you being a producer mm-hmm. you know um a real producer on top of that with Not many stick my name on a producer. exactly I many production credits so right. you know kudos to you for doing that i don't think a lot of people know that about you but we're going to touch on it because okay. that's what we do here touch things touch things yes yeah. we touch things we touch ourselves we do that often you do uh, sure oh wow that's how i stay sane really sure Man, you better be careful. That thing might fall off. It will. Kick it around the it's floor. It's been around for a long time, so I think. It's been around for a long time. How long? That long? A little bit. For real? Here and like there. Like ha- half a century? Uh, no, <laughs> and don't make me punch you in the face because I ain't scared of you and your mother. <laughs> I know you No. Not. I know you not. Um, <laughs> I'm scared of you. <laughs> so um, let's start from the beginning, you know, because mm-hmm. we all know your rise to success and we know you from the movies, but I want to know what jasmine star lewis what she was what what who that is you really um, said my middle name i did I on know a you. podcast i know you it's not in the public it is no it's if you not google it it is it is it is that's how i know it's hey, two google. r's or two t's it is yeah see Ew. i knew that shit because i read you know it. that why does wikipedia oh know my it? god i've kept that a secret for 30 years. You need to fire your team because it's out there. I need to fire my whole team. Yeah, that motherfucker's out there. Wow. Yeah, all your shit. Your birthday, too. No, one of them. Like, they I, they had me born in 1962, and then one point they had me born in 1951. So Damn. none of that is accurate. Really? I know, right? Because it's like 56. I thought we was going to stay friends. <laughs> I, <was just> <laughs> I thought I we was going to stay friends, you. but I clearly just... that's a no. This is what I do. <laughs> we we go at each other. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? I, I, we good at this that. This is how we do. This you did call me do. slick, though. Slick at the mouth. You said I was slick at the mouth. You super slick. I heard that. Your mouth super reckless. Not today. You gonna you gonna act right today? I'm gonna do the best I can with some act right juice right in this cup right okay. here. Okay, you ain't gonna jump out of pocket like a handkerchief. I'm gonna try not to. <laughs> it's all right. I know how to stuff you back in. So <clears throat> I know that didn't sound right at all. <laughs> it didn't even almost sound. I know right. we gonna talk about stuffing things in. <laughs> no. All right, we gonna be quiet. So um, you did. let's start. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Um, Wikipedia, Jasmine Star Lewis, two R's. <gasps> it's on there? Yeah. Told you. I am destroyed yeah. right Told now. You. You oh, can, you, my God. Yeah, you got to take it off. I, would I just, don't know how to do that. I'm snitching it. on you. See? 
it. You was. I didn't snitch on you. I seen the shit. But public record. Public record. That's your team. Fire them motherfuckers. Go ahead. What's my birthday? <clears throat> March 22nd, 1976. Okay. 76. That's my year. And? Okay. Wikipedia is smart. I believe the internet. Actually, I thought you was born in 80. I like you better and better. I thought you were we born better in 80. We better friends Yeah, now. I thought you was born in 80. You're but... so much better friends now. <laughs> All good. All mm-hmm. good. Let's start from the beginning. You are from uh, uh, Ohio, mm-hmm. a suburb of Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, Cleveland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, what is it? Um, I know it. What is it? Again? Well, I was born in Columbus, Columbus, but I was raised in Lorraine. Lorraine. Which is about 20 miles west <clears throat> of Cleveland. I think Lorraine is was on the map recently for the black dude that slapped the white dude in the store with the uh, tea can. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. That's how Maybe y'all, not. I don't know. <clears throat> that's how y'all get down in Lorraine? You know, we got to do what we got to do. Mm-hmm. And so we do. Okay. But yeah, yeah, we, it's a little country, a little city, all mm-hmm. mixed together, and you just got to survive. So what was your childhood like? My childhood was, uh, wow, we've never talked about my childhood. Mm-hmm. We're going there. We're going deep. My childhood was very interesting. I come from a multiracial background. Mm-hmm. So I, um, growing up in Lorraine, I didn't go to public school. I mm-hmm. went to private school. My sister, my middle sister, mm-hmm. I'm the baby of three. She, uh, the school that I went to, we had to get tested into. You had to actually get tested by a psychiatrist, have a, get your IQ evaluated, and get into the school. Mm-hmm. I started in kindergarten, so I didn't have friends from another school and want to stay there. Mm -hmm. So I did my best and got in. My dad, who was a a doctor, um, was a stickler about education. Mm -hmm. My middle sister, she's a a decent amount older than me. So she had already gotten friends, and she was in like sixth grade or seventh grade, and she didn't want to leave her friends. So she failed the test, Mm -hmm. and it was the first time I saw my dad lose it. Mm. She failed the test on purpose. He knew that. Okay. Um, but going to that school, it was called Lake Ridge Academy. It mm-hmm. was in Sheffield Village. And um, there, in total, from kindergarten to 12th grade, there's 350 students. There were six minorities. Mm. John Kim, Jamie Mom. John Kim was Asian. Jamie Mom was Hispanic. There were the McGowans, there's three of them, Kelly, Lenora, who was my age, mm-hmm. and the sister, can't remember the sister's name, mm-hmm. and one more person, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And, and so it was an all-white private school wow. um, filled with doctors and lawyers' kids, mm-hmm. so everybody had money, which was great and terrible at the same time. It's the first time I ever saw drugs. I didn't, I didn't partake, but, and all the teachers knew that, but so did all the friends. So... And I, I never, I held a black beauty in my hand for the first time, which is a pill. It was like this big. It was a capsule. What kind of pill is All it? black. I've never heard of I'm that. not 100% sure. I okay. think it's an upper. Okay. But they're called, this was a long time ago. So this okay. ca- they were called black beauties. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it's a capsule. It's about that big. Mm-hmm. And um, because the school was what the school was, mm-hmm. you had to ask a teacher mm-hmm. to go out and get a drink of water. You ha- Obviously, you have to ask if you want to go to the bathroom. Right. But. To go get a drink of water from the water fountain right outside the door, kids had to ask. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew I didn't do anything, so they would hand them to me, Mm -hmm. tell me to go out and get a drink of water, ask for, then the the kids that were known to do things would ask to go get a drink of water, have to show their hands. There was nothing in there because I was holding it. I didn't know what it was at the time, and I didn't know exactly what I was participating in. middle school? No, this High is school. second grade. Oh shit. Third grade. Damn. Fourth grade. Wow. All of that. Okay. So I would go out, stand at the water fountain, get a drink of water, hand them the pill, and go wow. on back in the classroom. So you were a mule way back then? Apparently. Wow. <laughs> I'd never been reduced to a mule, but apparently I was. <laughs> That's what you It were. wasn't that far, but yes, I was a mule. <laughs> okay. But it exposed me. I, I it wasn't until years later that I understood that they were actually drugs. Wow. But it exposed me very young mm. and you know, I went to that school. I was definitely racially profiled because the McGowan family were black kids. Mm-hmm. Jamie was Hispanic. John was Asian. Mm-hmm. And I was a combination. Mm-hmm. And the white kids didn't understand yeah, me or right. my heritage. They see my parents and they go, well, what are you? And all yeah. these things. So it was a bad, it was a bad, it was a terrible time. And 
I definitely got out. I graduated at 16 just Mm -hmm. to get out of school. Wow. Wow. Just to get out of school. And like I said, you had to take an IQ test every year just to stay in the school. So I was like, I'm going to excel to get out. I've been locked in lockers overnight. So you it was so you terrible. were subjected to bully to being bullied at at, at the at its lowest. I mean, wow. like the worst part of I it. I never knew that. The worst part of it. So mm-hmm. like, I learned to defend myself very young, mm-hmm. um, but also roll with it. Mm-hmm. You know. So I graduated to 16, and and uh, but before that, I I started in the music industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew I wanted to go to school for music, which I did, and I graduated uh, with two music degrees, mm-hmm. um, but. I started touring at 14. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to ask you something. I want to drag yeah. it back just a little bit. <clears throat> um, that's an interesting struggle. Um, mm-hmm. Many times you hear about minorities, mm-hmm. you know, just black or mm-hmm. brown people. Mm-hmm. But mixed kids, mm-hmm. you know, that struggle. I think it's worse. Yeah, because it's like I understand it's hard to find your place because for this side, you're not good enough. And mm-hmm. for the other side, you're, you're not, not good, good enough. enough. And we there is no place. I mean, you say you, you struggle to find your place. But there is no place. Mm-hmm. Where is the place? You don't go on this side. You don't go on that side. And, and I was subjected to kids that had the money and the means and the the lineage not to care mm-hmm. about how I felt. Right. And the I'll never forget his name was Billy Marshall. He was the headmaster's son. He hated me the most. Really? White kid? Okay. He was the headmaster's okay. son. Okay, right, yeah. So he was absolved of all wrongdoing yeah. at all times. I mean, she the made fact sure that they that. call him the fucking headmaster. Yeah, well, that thing. was private school. Oh, shit. That was that was like elite private school, not just regular <laughs> private school. Never, not Catholic school. I've never heard of that. That's elite <laughs> private school. Yeah, I wouldn't have seen my kid there still... with somebody they're going to call the headmaster. Oh, yeah. It's like some headmaster. plantation shit. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, uh, yeah, that was elite private school. And so Billy who? Marshall. Okay, what did I'll he never do? Never forget him. He's the one that locked me in the locker. He's uh-huh. the one that threw me downstairs. Oh, I mean, it was it was bad. Okay, it was really bad. Um, so real quick, I'm a Billy Google Marshall. Something. We oh. want to send a shout out to you. Fuck you. <laughs> and everybody, and everything that you, know. that you stand for. <laughs> we go- oh, we googling you, Billy. <laughs> Billy Marshall. We gonna find out where you at, Billy Marshall. We we pulling up. Ohio. <laughs> we pulling up. Yeah, his oh, mother yeah. was the headmaster the entire time mm-hmm. I was in school. So okay. she was. That's the principal. Just okay. in case anyone doesn't know, a mm-hmm. headmaster is a principal. Okay. And so, you know, he was, he didn't, he could do anything he wanted. Wow. And do you think that possibly he liked you? No. Oh. I 100% don't think he liked okay. me. Okay. You know what? Let me circle back. As an adult, I've never been asked that question. Yeah. Maybe he did. Yeah. Maybe. Because, you Maybe know, as kids. He used to pull my hair all yeah. the time. I had really long hair. And yeah. He used to pull my hair all the time. <clears throat> I, I remember one time I thought we were crossing over to a better space. We were in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. And we, like I said, we all went to school together. There was only 350 school mm-hmm. students in the entire school. So okay. everybody knew each other well. We were in seventh grade and I walked into class. It was French class. Mm-hmm. And he was sitting in his seat and I'll never forget. He said, Jasmine, you belong on the cover of a magazine. Mm-hmm. See, he was choosing up. Let me finish. Okay. And, I, and I, I did that too. I was like, oh, maybe he's trying to be nice to me for the uh-huh. first time in the name of Jesus. Okay. No, he said, Jet Magazine. Do you even know what that is? And that's what he said to me. So he was, tr- he was, it wasn't a good thing. Uh, that's kind of a compliment. Cause Jet was not the from shit. him. Not, yeah, but not from him. I, <laughs> I mean, think this that was, was not his, but I mean, I mean, but that was his, his, I, you know, I don't know. It's still fuck Billy, no, but I'm just he, saying yeah. maybe he, he was, was no, just it was a, bad. you don't think that he liked you and, and just, if he did, how he showed it was terrible. But that's what little boys do. You know, I didn't have to do that type of shit. We went all the way. We, we, Up all the way oh. to high school. He wasn't a little boy no more. Well, I mean, he still did. hitting me, beating me up, pulling my hair, I mean, scratching my face. I have scars now. Wow. But I mean, he did so much fuck shit when y'all was kids. By the time y'all became adults, he probably was like, well, shit, I got to just keep this train going. She ain't gonna going to fuck with me now. You <laughs> know, so that's true. how that's probably how he could get your attention. You you may be right. I bet you we're we going to find Billy. I'm going to find his ass Which, on was Facebook. High school you guys went to? Billy Marshall. Lake Ridge Academy. Okay. In Sheffield Village. Find that motherfucker on Facebook. I'm a There's a William person. Marshall that passed away two how, years how ago. How old was he? Born in 1975. No. No, Billy was younger than that. I'm um, older than that. So he would have been old. Yeah, okay. He was born. He was. You guys are about to be pissing on gravestones in a second. I was I'm about to say. I know. Wait, <laughs> I'm about to say, won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow. We, 
gonna look him. Okay. We gonna look him up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We gonna we gonna pull up on him because I've I've tried. You have you? I have. Okay. We gonna I'm gonna yeah. help you. We gonna help you with that. We that's gonna, gonna be a that's gonna be a new show where we confront bullies on on the from childhood oh, holding actually, court. I like. Hey it. hey, actually, bully. Rest in peace to my big brother Tiny. We actually developed a uh, pilot doing that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Me and him. I'm into it. But uh, okay, Billy Marshall. So. He fucked with you up until high school, mm-hmm. and and you graduated at sixteen basically to get away from Billy Marshall and Pretty his much. bullshit and and everybody. It wasn't just okay, him. okay. But yeah. but I mean I know you to, and I mean I know you as an adult. But I mean you know you're very charismatic and very confident. Were you like that then? I'm sure you still had friends or not. I did. Okay, I did. I had I had four friends. Okay. that were in the school, and two friends that did not go to the school. Okay, okay. and they're still my friends. Okay, today. So. What did you want to be? Like when they asked, raise your hand, what did you raise your hand and say you wanted to be? I wanted to be in the family business. Both my parents are doctors and I wanted to be a doctor. Really? What kind of doctor? I wanted to do internal medicine. Okay. I have a propensity for medicine. It comes easy to me. Uh Um, And that's what I wanted to do. You wanted to be like a proctologist? Not a (laughs) proctologist. (laughs) I believe I could venture to do those things, but uh, no, not a (laughs) proctologist. What? <laughs> I was just saying you want I didn't know. You I was trying to figure out what kind of doctor. I mean, I could I could test my skills. Would you like a an exam? No, Are I'm good. Sure? I'm good, yeah. Cause I got a little I mean, Asian female doctor and okay. That's hell. She can. It is. Yeah. You know. I had my. But prostate. my fingers are. Sl- I, I got slim. I got piano. I had my prostate checked like two years ago. Oh. Yeah, I felt violated. So violated. See, like my sugar waxing. I'm just saying. I, I was like, Violation. oh Jesus God, please. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And she's less laughing at me. Of course she is. Yeah. I mean, I think I would have been good at it though. Really? I have a gentle touch. Do you? I do. <clears throat> I'll take your word you for it. Want me to examine you guys? I'm good. I can I'm practice. Good. Ken knocking on 40. It, you, it's time for you to get that. You're not 40 yet? No. We're going to practice right here. You know it's prostate time, Ken. All right, zoom in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> practice. you know it's prostate time, Ken. Yep. <laughs> I mean, depending on how the dating work goes for me, I'll, I'll let you know if I end you up. You keep me posted. Yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I, 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 you know, I've always encouraged. It's so funny because... On social media one time, I was talking about that. And I know we kind of deviate and digressing a little bit. But I was saying, I was, you know, I was encouraging the motherfuckers to follow me. Like, hey, especially if you're a black man, you know, take care of your health. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, especially because we already are predisposed to, you know, certain shit, prostate cancer and things like that. So I'm like, man, take care of yourself. I mean, honestly, though, everybody, man. My my grandfather died at like 52 because he didn't do that. He he had prostate cancer, yeah. Really? Wow. And you need a colonoscopy too. Yeah, he could have just checked and mm-hmm. potentially got rid of that. Yeah, my doctor just uh, gave me a referral for that. Yeah, it's, here it's time lifestyle. for you. Yeah, you're old. Is so. it time for me? It is time for you <laughs> to take the pill, go to sleep, and let them stick something in your ass. <clears throat> oh, can God. we say ass on here? You can say whatever the fuck. Oh, that's you want. nice. That's yeah, good. come on, this whole court. This is what we do. <laughs> yeah, you're talking nothing. about him, so say no. You're they're gonna stick something in your ass. No, nothing being stuck in my ass. My doctor, shout out to my doctor, she's done it. But other than that, no. Well, that's what I mean. Somebody going to stick something in your ass, going to see what's up there. All right. So you wanted to be a doctor. Yes. So what, what? where did that dream go? Uh, it's still here. It doesn't mean that I'm never going to do it. Uh, but uh, I had I was, I was, had an affinity for music. I, was, I started playing my first instrument at two and a half years old. Okay. And I learned to play everything by ear. And then I took music lessons, and then I learned to play them better. So um, it was something that came natural to me, came easy to me. Mm -hmm. And I never intended it to be a career. I intended to do it just for fun. Mm -hmm. And then... And what instruments do you play? All of them, except for wind instruments. So I started with piano. Okay. I went to every string instrument, so guitar. I I toured as a bass player. Mm -hmm. Um, I play guitar. I play violin. I play oboe. I play everything that has strings. And uh, my uncle was a pretty famous jazz uh, drummer, mm-hmm. uh, my Uncle Frank. So um, I learned to play drums very young. I can play anything that you want unless it's a wind instrument. I just never got into blowing Wind shit. instrument mean oh, you never got into blowing shit. Blowing into oh, shit. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so. Very different thing. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> you had to have you know strong jaws. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so you don't have strong jaws. I don't think so. Really? Maybe not. You look like you have a strong jaw. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
I'll go home and find out. I don't know. Shout this out. podcast goes off the rails about every five minutes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Shout He's out. Asking. Shout out to the homie Brian. Salute <laughs> to you. Anyway. Good luck with that tonight. <laughs> um, so, okay. So you say, fuck it. I don't want to be a doctor. I did. I never said that. I just, I just started, I started um, touring very, very young. Okay. And I was an anomaly. So, okay, so that so you started touring it when? 14. Four, 14, with, 14. With who? With Roger who? Troutman and Zap. Everybody that was from Ohio. Really? You know, um, Ohio players, like everybody. Wow. And um, the Bark, well, there's a group mm-hmm. that was my second tour, and I was not quite 15 yet. Mm-hmm. And um, as a female bass player, I wasn't, you know, they wanted to keep me a secret. Mm-hmm. But they have a very famous bass player. He's still around, and he's still very famous. And I'll never forget my first tour. They liked what I did, but they couldn't. See, I wasn't allowed to be on stage. One, I was too young, mm-hmm. and two, that would look ridiculous. Yeah. So he was just never plugged in. And I used to sit on the side of the stage behind a curtain, and my mom was back there with me, and I played everything. I could see the stage. Damn. Um. So I played everything, and he was out there killing it. You don't want to say who it was? I can't know because okay. they're still touring. Okay. Just without me. So how is so. he doing this shit and you're not there, though? I mean, he he could always play. Was he high? Uh, no, not then. Oh, okay. No. Okay. No, he yeah. just, I was better. Oh, wow. <laughs> so but, let me ask you, did you play on the songs or you just played? Like, no. Uh, well, I started, I played on songs later, but okay. but as a 14, 15, 16, 17 uh-huh. year old, I was just doing tour. I was just touring. So how did you even get introduced to that world to be in a position? To My do that? uncle, who was a okay. pretty famous, was a pretty famous jazz drummer, okay. would bring me into the studio. And that's when I met um, Parliament and George Clinton and, mm-hmm. and, and Bootsy Collins. Mm-hmm. And I was 13 and a half, turning 14. Mm-hmm. And I would just go sit with my uncle and just watch him, you know, and I'll never forget the in the studio next to where he was playing was um, George Clinton and, mm-hmm. and all of Parliament and most of Funkadelic. Wow. And I love the music. So I would just go over there and sit and it's watch. It's yeah. still I still yeah. on my phone now. Yeah, that's dope. So and what I was go that sit like? And watch. I mean, you 14 and you hear playing music with I loved it. these stars. They I have a bass right now. There. My 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 most special bass mm-hmm. I got from Bootsy. He literally was there and he was like, this little girl is coming here every day. He was just watching us. And he said to me, he said, can you play that? And I said, I can. Mm-hmm. And so I, because I had my bass at the mm-hmm. time. And he said, I'll tell you what, if you, he took the bass off of the stand and he handed it to me. It was a Fender Precision fretless bass. So there's no frets on it. Mm-hmm. And I had not played a fretless yet, but I could play upright, which is the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's just giant. Yeah. He said, you come back in a week. If you can play this, you can have it. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. And I learned to play in a week everything he's ever played on every song he had ever played at the time. Mm-hmm. I still have that. He gave it to me and I still wow. have that place. And then I ended up playing for them years later, That's touring cool. with them years later. That's crazy because a bass guitar is pretty big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't I'm imagine. Big. I can't imagine you holding something big like that. I mean, time chip. I got long five arms minutes. and big hands. So <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> Every five minutes. <laughs> I'm good at big. I do big well. Really? I do big big best, in fact. I mean, okay. You know, I'm not a big person. Yeah. But I have an affinity for big things. Right. Hence why you're on the big court holding court show. Boom. Boom. With big muscles. With big muscles. There we go. There it is. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> so yes. Um, that's that. That's dope. I that never knew that. To, to I never knew that. Everyone. Okay. So, what what did your parents think about that? Especially them being so educated. My dad was not excited. Right. So you didn't go to college. I did. You did. I did. But I went to. I didn't. I, uh, I think I stepped on campus what fifteen times. Okay. I was doing what I was getting a degree in, mm-hmm. so they counted that as credits. I had to do undergrad, so yeah, so I had to do all of that. But as far as getting my degree in music, I have a, um, my my music degree is in um, composition, mm-hmm. so I can read and write, mm-hmm. which is what I had to do because I was like, you know, if this all goes to hell one day, I, I can teach, mm-hmm. and you have to have a degree to teach. Okay. So I I never really intended on using it, but I have it. Okay, what school did you go to? Ohio State University. Oh, okay, that's in Columbus, uh, Ohio. Right? Ish, ish, yeah. Okay, I've been there before. You have. I have. To yeah. Ohio State or to Columbus? To both. All right. Yeah, both. It's where I was born. Yeah. Can't get them. They don't make them like me no more. They don't. They broke the mold. It's over. Over. Done. I've Just never saying. ran into anything like you ever. 
<laughs> that's a compliment <laughs> or what? I don't think so, but no, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. You're one of one. Well, there we go. <laughs> so, so you do that. What's the craziest thing that you've seen? Because them back then, them groups I can was tell you, live. One of the craziest. Yes, they were. They were live. Especially George Clinton. They There's, were on that LSD man, shit. So, well, they smoked a lot of weed. Right. They did a lot of they look the it's all public, was so the they shit did everything that they yeah. did. Right. But that wasn't early. That was before me. Okay. They transitioned to mostly weed okay. when I came up as you know, because they're older than me. But well, so what is this? The eighties, I'm assuming. Yeah. Because the eighties, I mean, early. Okay, so they hadn't transitioned into coke yet. I, I, I never saw them do it, okay. but I did see, the, you asked me the craziest What's the craziest thing, thing? Yeah. that happened is, it has to do with Coke, and it was a group that I was not touring with. Well, I was with Roger Trotman and Zapp at the time, okay. touring with them. Mm -hmm. We had been on the road for about two straight years, mm -hmm. and we were doing a show with another group, very famous group, mm -hmm. and I was, I was the only girl ever, ever. Except for Shirley Murdoch, who was a grown woman. Oh, man, I love Shirley Murdoch. I love Shirley t still today. Yeah. But she would come and go. She didn't hang out with the guys as much yeah. as I did. I was everybody's, like, kid. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty protected. Right. And I was just sitting on the tour bus waiting to get off to, so we could go play. And the other group was on that tour bus. Mm -hmm. And the lead singer said, bring it to me. And there was a silver tray. A mountain of cocaine, mm -hmm. and he had a McDonald's straw. You know, McDonald's straws are yeah, really thick; thick. they're not thin. Yeah, and he took care of it, Damn. walked down on the stage, and killed it. Let me see. Let me take a shot at this. It was Uncle Charlie, wasn't it? I didn't say that. I'm saying. I'm guessing. I'm just throwing. It was Uncle Charlie. Wasn't it was. It? it could have been a lot of people, to be honest, because yeah. everybody was doing a very similar thing. <laughs> but I'm thinking of who would be on tour with that group and who got nostrils like that. Uh, does he have nostrils like that? Yeah, that boy got some nostrils on. Does he? Yes. You know that for a fact? Uh, I've heard. Oh, I don't know that part. Yeah. But it, yeah. I mean, we actually had his. We actually had his dope man on the show. You did. <clears throat> yes, we did. We did. We did. Nice. Yeah. Um. Shout out to Uncle Charlie. Who is still classic and wonderful. Yes. Yes. You know what? My mother told me I bullshit you not on everything that I love. My my dear mother told me that uh, Charlie Wilson. Should have been my father. She was into it. She was. She loved Charlie. Who Wilson. wasn't into Charlie though? I she was literally into told me that. I was too young, and I was like, she I might. She literally get into told it. me that. She said Charlie Wilson should have been your daddy. See, <laughs> who would you be then, man? Right. I would still be. I would be just small, instead of Courtney, I'd just be little small. Charlie. Right there, you go. I'd just be little Charlie. Hey, that ain't a bad day. Yeah, I probably have you know vacuum cleaning noses too. <laughs> <laughs> don't know that he does <laughs> i have you seen it Nah, but i mean he you know listen he you know he that's public record he's talked about him overcoming that so you know i'm sure i'm sure he did I'm, i hope he does yes because he he's did. Yeah. Uh, such a talent yeah I mean, you don't i saw those kind of things take a lot of really i think it's why i never touched it right because Absolutely. i was exposed to it so young and mm -hmm. i saw it take a lot of really amazing musicians that i admired down same with me i now you know, me coming from the environment that I came from, I seen it firsthand and, you know, in yeah. real life, it touched my family and all that. So yeah. I think when you get exposed to it early, that's why I don't smoke. It's like you make a decision. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Mm -hmm. I never have. Mm -hmm. I don't like being around Oh, except people. one time you drank and that's how you met your wife and you got the courage. Oh, yeah. That, I, well, yeah. I was a kid. Right. You, know you said you never yeah, drank. Yeah, but I'm I... Saying. Well, you why know, you got your lovely wife. Well, well in terms well, I have of... Some, you know, liquid courage. Well, no, that's not how that happened. Well, I know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was on some pimp shit. What are you talking about? I was on some pimp shit. Anyway, we so. <laughs> Young Bootsy Collins right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so with the, uh, I, I, I was drinking that night because I was thirsty. Yeah. That's all it was. It was it them was. little Cisco shots. You I know. know what I, mean? I know. No, it was Everclear. That's like lighter fluid. Yeah. I've Everclear. never had it, but I, I've smelled it before. I was I mean, like, I think I could set something liquor. on fire with this. Yeah. It's like pure alcohol. Yeah, I was on one. Then. I didn't have my first cocktail until I was 35 years old. I didn't touch anything. Really? Mm -hmm. Damn, 35. that was a minute ago. It was like so. five minutes ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> no just, I know your minute. That was I'm sarcasm be. at its best. <laughs> I'm the addict on the show. You I did that. everything. <laughs> See, I didn't do anything. I think it's because of my exposure. Yeah, That's absolutely. Why. So... You you go on tour. How long did you tour? I toured for eleven straight years. I never came home. Damn. Ele so I, I, fourteen. That's how I stopped. Okay. Is because I woke up on a tour bus in the middle of the night. I didn't know who I was with or where I was, mm -hmm. and I went. I think I'm done. Okay. That and that was when I was done. So damn. So from fourteen to twenty, 
mid twenties. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. What's some of the groups that you played with? Oh, all of them. Name them. Who are they? Uh, Roger Chalman and Zap. I mm-hmm. toured with Parliament. I toured with Funkadelic. I toured with the Ohio Players. I played for Prince's Prince's first female bass player. That's how he got a female years later. Wow. And so for him. I toured for him and uh, for just a year, though. That was just to get out of my Paisley Park deal because he wanted me to be an artist, mm-hmm. and he wanted me to be something at the time that I didn't want to be. Like Vanity? Yes. Yeah. He saw he saw that, but he saw a music. He saw Sheila E. and Vanity smashed together in mm-hmm. me. I could see it. And I loved Denise. I loved her. She yeah, was for awesome. Sure. For sure. Um, she wasn't the talent that he wanted, but yeah. she had everything else. Right. And he wanted the talent that Sheila E. had it as a musician yeah. mixed with a look yeah. that Denise had. I could see that because Vanity was dope. I liked yeah. her, but she couldn't really sing, but no. she had the look. She, and she had charisma, charisma. she had personality, yeah, she yeah, had yeah. all that stuff. She was dope. So he wanted to turn me into a combination of those mm-hmm. two and basically be naked on stage. And at the time, because I was a female playing a bass, which mm-hmm. is a male-dominated instrument, Mm-hmm. And I was young. I was like, I don't, I'm not trying to be out there and just be a girl in heels. Mm-hmm. Like, I wanted to be more than that. Yeah. I get the appeal of it now. Right. I ended up doing that later. Right. But at the time, I was like, no, you need to take me serious. That's a, so I was like, look, I signed and I wanted out of my deal. Mm-hmm. And he wouldn't let me out. And how I got out was touring f- with him for a year. Wow. So What I kind of out. guy was Prince? A genius. Mm-hmm. A scary amazing genius. Why do you say scary? Um, because you didn't know what he was going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you couldn't predict him. There was pieces of you that wanted to, but you couldn't. So it's best to let it go and just mm-hmm. figure out what he was a perfectionist. He was, he would change clothes before he, he would walk in a studio, not feel his outfit. Mm-hmm. Us, we're just waiting there. Could be all night. Cause he'd go home and change 15 times <laughs> until he felt the moment. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. And then he would play. And then you were you either stayed or you had to go. If he could pick your instrument up and play it better than you, which he could all of them, mm-hmm. you needed to go. Really? Yeah. It was, he was, he was, I learned more than anything with him. Mm. Anything about not just what I did as a musician, but my attitude. Um, sort of, he was an all-encompassing performer. Mm-hmm. And... I learned a lot. Like, I needed to be the best at what I did because mm-hmm. he was the best at what he did, and he did it all. Mm. So was his, like, behind closed doors, was it was he the same as his public persona, or was he different? He liked to cook. Mm-hmm. He liked to play basketball for real, and he did it in heels, and he yeah. did it better I heard than anybody that. I ever Everybody saw. says oh that's God. true. But that, that's yeah. 100% the truth. Yeah. I watched it. He'll do it in the middle of the night, too. he get everybody up out of their bed. We all play, we, we going in the back. He, he, lived in, <laughs> he had a place in Beverly Hills at the time because uh-huh. we used to record at Larrabee uh, West, which mm-hmm. is in West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, he would get out there. Everybody get up. Wow. We're going to play basketball. He could really. I heard he ran his ship with a with an iron fist, though, you know, that he pretty much. Yeah. yeah it was his way. It was. Yeah. It was strictly my vision. You do it my way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was. That was never a question. <laughs> really? <laughs> not Not if you wanted to stay. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's genius, though. I mean, Steve Jobs. Here's could, the thing: you we say never the had a thing. problem with it because we knew who he was. We knew what yeah. he did. Yeah. And how are you gonna get mad at somebody that does what he does? You go, how do you want me to do it? Mm-hmm. And he'd tell you, Prince, once. Joe Jackson, mm-hmm. Steve Jobs. And that's it. Yeah. Like, wow. They, they are, Bill Gates. But ultimately, you you felt the love. He was a good dude. Yeah, he was. Mm-hmm. He was. What was the craziest thing you experienced being around him? Him or anybody around him. <laughs> here's Either. what. Okay, here's what. I, I'm not going. I'm never. I'm, he's not here with us anymore, so I'm never going to disparage him. But he couldn't drive. Really? Jesus. I'm talking about everybody was scared. <laughs> We'd all go from the studio. We're gonna get something to eat. Yeah. There's four or five cars. Mm-hmm. Everybody would run. His brother Dwayne looked just like him, but he was six four. Uh huh. And and his little brother wasn't, uh-huh. even though Dwayne is the younger brother. Okay. Um, everybody run to everybody else's car. Nobody run to ride him because he can't drive like at all. <laughs> and he, he get mad. So we can't go nowhere. Everybody, somebody getting in the car. Somebody mm. get in the fucking car. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I only happened to me once. I only had to get in the car once because nobody would get in the car. He, he really wasn't a good driver. 
Wow. Um, Is it because he could barely touch the pedals or he just didn't? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just saying he was a little guy. And I know it could be hard to drive in heels. The shade comes <laughs> off of this side no, of the saying, road I right Prince. now. I fuck okay. Prince. Talk about the I road. mean, I mean, oh, yeah, no, he was, he just couldn't drive. I think Michael Jackson couldn't drive either. Really? No, I was in a studio. I wasn't playing for him. He was in the studio next to us. We were somewhere else in the studio. And I'll never forget, he, he was... Everybody go out and move your car from the parking lot. Michael's on the way. And he had a, he was driving those big jimmies at the time, those really big ones. Yeah. It's white. Fucked up. Six cars in the parking lot really? on the first try. Came in the studio and said, now he'll pay everybody for their car, but yeah. he said he created art. He, <laughs> I'll never forget. He said it was art. All cars fucked up. Really? Up. I mean, he couldn't drive either. So, so Mike didn't hit your shit. Not and, mine. And, no, he hit everybody, everybody else's shit and came in and said. It was art. Oh, wow. He created art. I created a masterpiece outside. Please don't do his voice. <laughs> Frightening to me on another level. I created a masterpiece outside. You guys go out and look at it. Take a look. <laughs> but so also, what? he just cashed everyone out, though. Yeah, because he knew he knew it didn't feel like art to them. <laughs> Wasn't you art, know what? But to him, it was art. Eddie Murphy told, uh, told a funny story about Prince. He said that. He said that Prince, he seen a T-bird, mm -hmm. and it was going past his house. Mm -hmm. And it was driving crazy, mm -hmm. and a hubcap came off. Mm -hmm. And he said he was just kind of looking, and the gold makes a U-turn, comes back. He said Prince hops out the car, yeah, and grabs his <laughs> and grabs his hubcap. Get some. Yeah, <laughs> he, couldn't, he wasn't a good driver. That's he hitting a curve. That's that. usually when it pop off. Yeah, <laughs> I had no doubt about that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So at you, so you tour up until twenty five, twenty six. What made younger, you, but yes. Okay. What made you, you know, say, okay, I'm done with this? I woke up. Okay. I woke up and I didn't know where I was. And that, that was a scary thing to me. Okay. Because I wasn't on drugs. I wasn't drinking. And you wake up on a tour bus with a bunch. You don't know where you are or who you're with. Mm -hmm. Because I was moving around and I was like, I'm, I think I'm done. Okay. So then, I mean, what did you feel like you wanted to do? At I didn't point? know what I wanted to do. I know I had never had a nine to five job in my entire life. Okay. I had a, I could teach because I had a degree in music, but that wasn't interesting to me. So I literally, this was a time way back then when you could just say, I'm going to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, you know, they say ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Ignorance was bliss because no one said to me, well, you can't just say I'm going to be an actor and then be one. Right. So I said, I'm going to be an actor. And I was working with a kid that lived down the street um, on his music. His, he was doing, he was singing. He was like um, 10 at the time. Mm -hmm. And his mother, he was also an actor. I didn't know that. I was working You're on You're still in record. Ohio. No, no, no. I'm out here. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I'm in my 20s. So I went down the street, uh, knocked on their door, and I said to his mom, I said, I know you manage him as an actor. I'm going to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay. <laughs> like, and I said, so I want you to manage me. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, this was on a Tuesday. I'll never forget it. And she said, well, it doesn't really work that way, but can you read for me? And I was like, well, yeah, I can read. I didn't know what, I, I was so, you know, yeah. I was like, I didn't know what you meant. Right. She was like, let me give you some, some sides. And I was like, what side? Yeah, I did the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So she said, just read this. Yeah. And it was two pages. Mm -hmm. And I read it. And she's like, oh, you're good. And I was like, okay, let's, let's go do this then. Mm -hmm. Let's go be an actor. And she's like, I'm going to manage you. The next day, she had me an, a meeting with an agent, but not like an agency. Right. An agent. Mm -hmm. It was one guy, one office, one phone. He didn't even have a secretary. It was that was the next day, and he said the same thing. Read for me. Well, I got it this time. So I was like, oh, I know how to do. I know what that means. Mm -hmm. So I read for him, and he said, I'm going to take you on. And I said, He said, Where's your headshot? I said, I don't have a headshot. He said, What about a resume? I said, I don't have a resume. Mm -hmm. And he said, Okay, we we got a good start here. That was sarcasm. Right. He knew someone over. He knew a casting director that was casting Martin. Mm -hmm. And the very next day, so now we're on day three, mm -hmm. I had my first audition for Martin. It was only one line. And mm -hmm. my manager called me and she said, you need to go in and you need to read what they tell you to read and, and then come out. Mm -hmm. She said, you need to wear a dress. I said, got it. I showed up. I read. I left. That night she called me and she said, you booked the job. I didn't know what she was talking about. Wow. I, I, was moved, I had moved on to something else. It was that evening, but I had moved on to something else. And I, she was like, remember you went in for Martin? I was like, oh, yeah. She said, you booked it. I was like, awesome. Mm -hmm. On that Monday, I was on set for the first time. Wow. And and so that was, how long was that from the time that you told her, I want you to manage me? Four days. Wow. Well, let's see. Tuesday, I had her. Wednesday, I had an agent. 
Thursday, I went to the audition. Mm -hmm. Thursday evening, I found out that I booked the job. And on that Monday, I went to work. Wow. Never took an acting class up at no. that point. No. Wow. No. And I, I went to work and I stood around on, on the soundstage when it wasn't. I only had one line. So I, like, I had a lot of downtime. Mm -hmm. And I, that was back then when you do a week. You do Monday through Friday. You didn't shoot till Friday. So you just rehearsed mm -hmm. and fooled around mostly. Just played around. Mm -hmm. And I stayed on set. When everybody was at lunch, I was on the soundstage. I was looking at everything. I was watching everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I just did my one line. And, and I literally had another audition on that Monday. I, we shot on Friday. I had another audition on Monday, but now I have a resume. I have one thing on my resume. Mm -hmm. But it also made it so that I could join the union because I have a speaking role on a TV series. So back then it only took one? That they, I was tapped hardly then. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, I I went to my next audition on that Monday, booked that job, and I didn't stop working for maybe 15, 16 years straight. Wow. And I got my first series regular less than a year after I got in the industry. Wow. Which was? Good news. Good news. Now, who was on that show? And what David Ramsey. That was on UPN. That was when okay. we should just go to UPN and everybody worked all the time. Yeah, I remember UPN. You didn't ever not work. Mm -hmm. Whether you were series regular or guest star or recurring or show hopping, it was constant. Mm -hmm. we, we, you just could go to work. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it is now. Um, but yeah, I, uh, it was good news and David Ramsey was on there and mm -hmm. Guy Torrey and mm -hmm. uh, Tracy Sherelle Jones. We're all still friends. Okay. And that was my first series regular and that was the first time that I was like, so you want me to do this TV show mm -hmm. from Monday to Friday. Usually on Monday, we just did the table read, and everybody would eat the really good food and go home. I was home by 10 o'clock in the, in the morning. Mm -hmm. The only long days were Thursday and Friday. And I was like, you going to pay me $16,000 a week <laughs> to do this? I'm in. Wow. <laughs> and that was a low paycheck. At right, the time. right. That was my right, first series. Run. Right. <laughs> well, I was like, oh, I, I, I can. I, I'm doing can do that. what I'm doing. And so yeah. that went on for how many seasons did you get out of that? No, we only did two seasons. And that was okay. because we were actually the number one show on UPN. Mm -hmm. But Ed Weinberger, our EP, who is still around, and he, he's the one that created Mary Tyler Moore and Taxi and all those classic shows. And Amen. Mm -hmm. We were, I Good News Amen. was a young version of Amen. Same thing, yeah. set in a church, yeah. pastor. I still love that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you've never seen my show, Good News, I I remember it. I don't think that mm -hmm. I ever watched it. Mm -hmm. But I do remember it, though. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll I wouldn't. That. Cause, I Good mean, news was awesome. Yeah, I was really young at the time. Mm, not that so, young. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got about one more young than you. And no, then you're but have to arm wrestle for this one. Nah, I do. I do remember the show though. It I was do. a good show. Yeah. He, but he was, um, he was, he was Hollywood royalty. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the next season, UPN, um, the president changed. Mm -hmm. Um, to somebody that was that did not like Ed because apparently. 25 years before that day, he was Ed Weinberger's intern. Mm -hmm. And Ed pushed his desk out onto the street. Ed was a yeller. Mm -hmm. He was, he just, it is what he was. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. He would scream and shout at everybody and mm -hmm. he didn't care, you know. Um, but people respected him. Mm -hmm. And he yelled at him and he pushed his desk onto the street. Wow. And obviously he quit. Okay. And Ed said, basically, fuck you. Please don't ever come back. Yeah. 25 years later, he canceled our show and Good News in one fell swoop as soon as he became president. Not because we weren't great. We were yeah. the number one and two show. Ed had Sparks and Good News. Number I remember one and Sparks. number two show. And he took him away. Sparks was what's Nunez? Was that? Miguel. Miguel. Mm -hmm. Miguel. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and Terrence Howard. Yes, I remember that. Because I was doing episodes. We would also go back and forth because they mm -hmm. were sister shows, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we would do guest stars on each other's show. And the upfronts, that's when you, they're announcing the new shows that mm -hmm. are coming out. We knew we were, we were the number one show. How are we not coming back? So we were all packing our bags. And usually you hear if you're not picked up again months before the upfront so mm -hmm. you can just go get another job. They'll release you from your contract and you can go get another job for the actors. Mm -hmm. We weren't told that. Ed wasn't told that. They w he waited until the night before. Ed was already in New York. Yeah. Our tickets are as a cast were booked to go to New York to do press. Mm -hmm. And we were called and said, oh, yeah, by the way, you're not coming back. 
And he told Ed in the press conference in front of everyone. Damn. So he waited. He held on to that grudge for 25 years. years. Damn. And Ed knew what time it was. He knew that. I I think he was caught off guard. He wouldn't have been in New York. He didn't know. Mm -mm. But once he did it, he knew what it was about. Oh, 100% he knew what it was about. Wow. How did Ed respond to that? Uh, I don't know. We didn't, we were done. Okay. So we all went on, went on other shows. Wow. So, Mm -hmm. so you leave good news. Then what do you, cause you started in TV basically. You hadn't done movies at, I had done independent movies, but not like independence, but not a studio movie yet. Um, and then right during good news, I did a, how to be a player, how to be a player, Mm -hmm. right? How to be a player. player. I mean, one of my favorite movies as a kid. How to Love Be a Player it. was dope. Really? Yeah. Which Love part it. was dope? The whole movie. Love it. The whole uh, movie. I'm okay. saying, so you had to. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 to, now there's some hate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, so, okay, so How to Be a Player, right? Mm-hmm. I know you you and I spoke, and uh, you told me about the situation with How to Be Which a Player. Which I cannot talk about. Really? Mm-mm. Can... I talked to you. Okay, okay. Yeah. But. The thing, but that it, it was a bad thing. Yeah, but it, but it, it wasn't supposed to happen. But I ended up topless on the movie. Right. But I wasn't supposed. To, it wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. No. So everybody saw your tatas on How to Be a Player. Running down the stairs, apparently. You so remember bouncing. That part? Yeah. You do. Yeah. Ew! Oh. Really? You said yeah. Really? <laughs> Damn. Really? So you sitting so right across the table from her, looking at the infamous tatas from How to Be a Player. I mean, this is Hollywood, bro. I've been around for twenty years. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of ta- tatas in the they industry. Are. So how how did that feel? But mine I mean, are real. Y- Just saying. Are they? Hundred percent. Really? No. <laughs> although, although although I do remember the movie, so I'm interested on how they ended up. It just uh, they didn't have a nudity waiver for me. And yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. they everybody else that they that was naked had a nudity waiver, and I re- didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And then I was told one thing, and something else happened. Wow! So how did you feel once you saw it? Violated. I, was... I didn't do any press for it. I don't know if I'm wow. not on the poster. Wow. I didn't go to the um, the red carpet. I didn't mm-hmm. go to the screening. I didn't the premiere. I didn't do any. I didn't promote the movie. So so just so I understand, that wasn't even supposed to be in the movie. No, I was supposed style. to just be running down right, the stage. Right. 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 That but so so now you see the movie with everybody else just I to did. see yourself nude and yeah. you didn't think it was going to be that. Right. Wow. So how did you feel when that? Not happened? awesome. Violated. Violated. Much like the sugar waxing. Wow. Violated. Did you cry? No. No. You didn't cry? No, I'm not a big big crier. Okay. I am Did you feel angry? I felt very angry. Really? Yeah, I What did you want? Did some... you want to go do something to him? Yeah, but you know. You I want, want to, to go fight. to jail. You want to fight? I'm used to fighting. Really? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't fight though. Okay. Yeah, I just, I took matters into my own hands. And really? I feel very vindicated. You pulled up. Yeah, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> you wanted all the smoke. In a way, I really did. <laughs> I know. I'm not. Well, I am a fighter. I I try not to though. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, damn. So you felt violated from them showing your breast and how to be a player. Because you, I don't have a problem with showing my breast. I understand. I have a problem when you tell me you're not going exactly. to and then you it do. It was the way they did it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I didn't at the time want to show them because I was very new in the industry. Right. So I didn't give them a nudity waiver for that reason. Right, right. So Fire me and hire someone that wants to be naked. That's okay. Half the girls in a movie was naked. And they're right. okay with that. No judgment. Right. It wasn't for me. I'm curious. So, uh, being that your parents were, you know, did what were what was their take on that? They didn't. Oh, they were like. My mom is a Caucasian woman, and mm-hmm. she's very free. Okay. So you know, <laughs> nudity wasn't a big deal. All right. So she's kind of was she a flower power type? No, no, because she was a professional. Okay. But but I, I'll never forget my mom. Every time she would come home, mm-hmm. the first thing she would do was take off her clothes walking through the house. Okay. And get to her room eventually. Okay. And find a robe. So nudity wasn't a thing. Not a thing. Oh, okay. Still isn't a thing for me. Okay. When I choose that. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I naked is good. I've been around choice you choice is the key word. Well, no, I mean, right. Choice is the key word. Choice. And no, and that's probably for a reason. Right, I ain't supposed <laughs> to see you naked. Right? I'm just, we, what would be the occasion? <laughs> I know, right? That that would happen. I mean, we have done production. You ain't never said, hey, Well, let you me. know, I haven't been on camera. <laughs> and also, I didn't walk around saying, you know, I'm just real hot. Right. I'm going to take off my clothes right here. <laughs> so... All right, how to be a player. So that's your that was your first studio movie. That was my first studio movie. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which led to what opportunity at that point? Because now a I lot mean, of things. Um, I mean, so now you're in the Hollywood circles. Yeah. So now you you kind of that led to an ABC show. Okay. Was, which uh, was my character was a, a madam, mm-hmm. and she was the 
What was it? I remember the, the audition. It was called Line of Fire. Okay. And I remember the audition. Um, I was the the character was supposed to be a forty year old white woman because she was the, playing the wife, mm -hmm. and she was a, playing the wife of um, a guy, but she was also a madam. Mm -hmm. And my agent sent me in, and I remember saying, "Did I get the wrong sides?" Like I was very confused, and she was like, "No." But Mary Jo Slater was the casting director. That was Chris, that's Christian Slater's mom, mm -hmm. and she always liked to cast like bringing one or two people completely outside the box. Mm -hmm. I hope she's still like that. I was one of those people. So I walked in the most relaxed I'd ever been because I was like, I don't have a shot in hell, but I liked Mary Jo, like she, this cast director. She knew me well, and I was like, she's bringing me in just probably you know, throw a wild card in there. So I was like, I'm just going to go have some fun, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go home and go to lunch. Mm -hmm. I went in. I had some fun, and I remember her saying, sit in the waiting room. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. And they brought everybody else in, and nobody in that room looked like me. Nobody. So I sat and sat, and I was getting hungry and hungrier, because you know I like to eat. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Can I go now? Because it's over." And she's like, "Yeah, can you come back in the, to the room for a second? And I was like, "Sure." And Rod Lurie, who created the show, he's a he's a show creator, and it was a little bit about him, mm -hmm. um, like black women. Mm -hmm. He was an older white man, and he liked black women. And he said to me, he said, "You were really, really," because I had a meeting with him mm -hmm. right then. But I had been there for hours. And she said, he said, um, I really liked what you did. He said, this is not, this character isn't, wasn't written for you. Mm -hmm. He said, but if you'd like to do it, I would really like you to do it. Mm -hmm. And I said, could I play a madam in a brothel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, okay, so let's, let's do this. And then it wasn't until later that he told me, he said, I, I want to let you know. We were on set by then. We were working. And he said, you look like my very first girlfriend. He was shooting a shot right there. Yeah, he had that casting couch ready for you. <laughs> no, shooting a shot. He was married by. Then. He had plastic he on the couch. And everything. He liked black women. He, yeah. And apparently, I did. I looked like his very first girlfriend. And he was like, "I just like you know, you brought wow. me back." And I was like, "Okay." So it was ABC. I said, "I'll take you back." So, so speaking of that, though, I mean, so now you you have arrived. I mean, you're in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and you being an attractive woman, I mean, has that. Emma. Always been, a, huh? Emma. Yeah, all right. you know what I'm saying. So, um, <laughs> <You're lying. laughs> yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. Um, I know. Have you ever been indecently proposed? You know, for a role like, you know, because you are an attractive woman, and we know how this business can be. Like, you have any experience have I ever with that? Been indecently proposed. Um, proposed to. Yes, proposed to for a, a part. I don't think so. Right. I think that obviously I've been in rooms mostly once it gets to a producer session mm -hmm. where I have been definitely told you're attractive. Mm -hmm. But no, I don't think I have mm -hmm. ever been um, put in a position to feel compromised. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I respect all the people that that's happened to and that have passed on the opportunity because they didn't like the way it came right. to them. But I, I started getting established more at a time when it wasn't as prominent as it is. Mm -hmm. And then by the time it became really prominent and prevalent, I was already established. Mm -hmm. So they, they just didn't go there. You either offer me a job or not because right. it, it is what it is. Right. Maybe it's just how you carried yourself, because I think it's always been prominent. Maybe. Men, maybe men, it was. I, 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 didn't, I didn't face it, really. And, and if I did, I missed it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, you know, think that I'm slow, so I would have seen it. And I just, I, maybe it is the way I mm -hmm. uh, project yeah. mm -hmm. myself. I don't know. But I never, it's never really happened to me. Okay. okay. No, I don't. I, it's interesting. I've been hit on after the job was already in motion. Like mm -hmm. we were already on set. Right. And it's like, you want to go to dinner? And I, I know what dinner means. We, yeah. We ain't eating. Oh, uh, you wasn't trying to get eight. I mean, go eat. No. Okay. <laughs> I slipped out. <laughs> I'll say you wasn't trying to go eat. I am with my sugar wax now. That's all I want now. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> okay. 
Okay. No, I didn't. And you know, like I said, I I was propositioned in a, in the most minor way possible. Got you. Because I think I had a bit of a reputation. Like, please don't do that. Yeah, yeah. So you commanded respect. I mean, maybe. Yeah. No Me Too moments for Jasmine Lewis. Oh, pause. Maybe there is. Not exactly. Not for a job. Hmm. Something did happen to me. Really. That I've never, ever, ever publicly spoken about. My husband knows. Mm hmm. You ain't tell me? Mm mm. How the fuck you ain't tell me? I mean, I'm your dog. My husband you knows, and the guy that I was with at the time, mm -hmm. my boyfriend knew, mm -hmm. who was actually my fiance. Really? Because he was there. Something happened while your boyfriend was there? Not in the room. Okay. We were out of town. We were promoting a movie. Okay. Me and another actor. We were promoting a movie. Okay. This actor has been publicly called out and a lot of he's done a lot of bad things is that the person you that yeah it happened uh, who is it? I, was, I mean if it's public i can't but you said i've never public, okay. it is but it's okay. never i've never spoken about it with regard to myself oh okay and it's interesting because when the move this was before that mm -hmm. but when all the meat everybody started talking about mm -hmm. things me and one other actor that's a friend of mine mm -hmm. it's happened to both of us in different ways but with the same person really yeah we both said we're just going to be quiet. And why, I why we chose, you don't know him personally, I oh, don't okay. think. Okay. But you know of him. Oh, okay. I mean, it's pretty easy to go through the movie list here and just, you know, narrow it down. Oh, so you it, worked with bet, him? Yeah. Oh. We were promoting the movie. We were out of town promoting the movie. We were in Vegas. And, uh, <laughs> and we got Bill he we got had Bill. his friends in <laughs> So town. we got to pull up on Billy uh, from Columbus. And Billy we got, Marshall. And now we got this rat, this other actor nigga. We so I never on. told you. You I never, never told, told me, but I know you. you'll tell me. So we yeah, gonna, we're gonna pull it up was on bad. him. Bad. Um, we were in Vegas. We had we were signing posters for mm -hmm. the movie because the movie was out, mm -hmm. and we were done. So we were staying in a hotel, all mm -hmm. of us, everybody. That was it. Was just they were sending different cast members out to different cities to promote, and mm -hmm. I was paired with this person because we were both sort of easy, off the cuff, and mm -hmm. funny. Mm -hmm. Like we could just go back and forth. Mm -hmm. So it made it interesting. It was just sort of like a meet and greet. Mm -hmm. We were signing posters. We were all done. Mm -hmm. And I never forget what I had on. I had on a jean jumpsuit mm -hmm. that zipped up the front. Okay. And we were done. We have been out there for hours. Mm -hmm. Going back in the hotel. You know, Vegas hotels. It's a lot of floors. Mm -hmm. And we were like near the top of the floor. We were both all staying on the same floor. And I was in the elevator. And he had two male friends that were in town just to see, you know, mm -hmm. hang out and whatever. But, you know, you've worked with someone and then you've been work, you know, doing promotion with this person. You think that's your friend and you, mm -hmm. you're very comfortable. Right. So getting in the elevator with him and his two friends in a Vegas elevator to go, you know, 42 floors up right. wasn't a thing. We were just right. talking in there. And he looked at his friend and his friend pushed the emergency stop. And he said, you're going to finally give me what I want. Really? I thought he was kidding. I'm not. I started laughing. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, I had really high heels on. Mm -hmm. And um, he tried to, he came at me to try to unzip my, mm -hmm. and that's when I caught his hand mm -hmm. right here. And I was like, no, no, you, no you're not going to unzip. Mm -hmm. a, a big guy. Okay. Pushed me back, tried to unzip it. We were fighting now with my zipper because I and realized his, now his we His friend is in there watching. Two friends. Two friends are watching, watching. this. Wow. And um, kept the elevator from moving. And people, are, I guess, are trying to make it move again because mm -hmm. they're on different floors. Mm -hmm. So it would start moving and they would stop it again. Mm -hmm. We were fighting with the zipper. He got the zipper down and tried to pull it off of my body. Mm -hmm. Now we're fighting. We're both sweating. And I was like, you not going to no. right. And we fought and we fought. And we went up and down. I'll never forget. We stopped on a floor, opened up, and there was a bunch of people trying to get in the elevator. And his two friends stood in front of the door and said, you're not getting on this elevator. And he got the, the, my jumpsuit off of me, like the top of me, but it was still on, on my waist. Mm -hmm. I got out on our floor. I managed to get out on our floor. He jumped up. Like I said, I had on really high heels. Mm -hmm. He tried to stop me by tackling me. He mm -hmm. jumped on my back. And you know how like those long halls in the casino? Yeah. I carried him on my back fighting till I got to my room and I started banging on my door and I was screaming all the mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. but it's Vegas. Right. Who ain't screaming in the hallway? Right. And my fiance at the time came out. Mm. He was in the room next to my, our room. Mm. He jumps off, goes to his room. And now we 
are looking a mess, both of us. I got, I got, I went, I just pushed him back in the door when we went in our room and I told him what happened. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going next door. And I was like, I don't want you to go next door. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I don't want you to do that because that's going to end up in a fight. Mm -hmm. He goes next door anyway. Um, he, As he should. denied right. everything Absolutely. that As happened, he but he saw me. Yeah. He saw, he Ain't knew. Ain't no denying. He, he knew. Should, he shouldn't even been talking. No, no he was, on site. he talked, on he site. talked it's through on it. Site. Yeah, it didn't yeah. happen. He it, he talked through it, came back over about an hour later and he said, you know, he'll, he's going to leave you alone. And I was like, okay. Shit. And that was that. No, he, he, he definitely tried to rape me. And listen, I ain't even, I didn't, sh I didn't, listen, I didn't shot at niggas for taking my, my old lady's parking space. <laughs> that really happened. <laughs> That really I happened. have no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah, so I don't doubt you know that at mean? all. Yes, that really happened. It's a different know. cut. It's you a different cut. I mean? Yeah, that's on site. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I'm sorry that happened to you, baby. Yeah, it's uh, it, we we dude we ain't got speak for years. Dude ain't got his comeuppance yet, though. Ain't nobody. Serving? Oh yeah, he's okay. been he's been um convicted. Really. Of rape, assault, um, mis um, uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh a lot of things. Okay. A lot. Sodomy is that what the Yeah, but but okay. but a lot of things. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Sodomy too. But you need yes, to, a lot of things. I don't know why you just don't say put this motherfucker on blast. It's been too many years. Really? I, you I should know. put him on blast. I, I mean, do it on this show. So then if he yeah. feels some kind of way, he can pull up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put the on this segment, we'll put our address so he can pull up right when you say his name. Urban California. Yeah, we can let him know right. Oh, I we we've, we've spoken since then. And um, you spoke to him and said what? It was years. So uh, before I did, no and I no ran disrespect. into him at an event. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, no! Well, if I say this, then you're gonna know. So I'm. I worked with him again. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. And how did that go? Not well. Okay. Because another cast member knew about it. Was it on a movie or TV show? It was a movie. Which one? One of them. <laughs> <laughs> but another cast member knew about it, and this cast member didn't play, and 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 and. and it wasn't, it wasn't. So good. what was his, uh, so I know, I mean, so you worked he with him. He pretended like nothing happened. Really? Mm -hmm. Damn, homie sick, homie sadistic yeah. like that. Yes. Wow. I'm very sick. Hours. And he's ago. still, is he still working? Oh, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Like yeah, you're going to have to talk to me off camera and let mm -hmm. me know who Just that going is. going through the list. Like it's all good. Damn. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you. I mean, I'm glad that he wasn't successful and he that wasn't. fighter, that fighter spirit of yours, mm -hmm. you know, kicked One in. of us was going to die and it wasn't going to be yeah. me. Yeah. But your ex should have handled that, though. You know what I mean? That's why he's an ex. Yeah. Yeah, he needed to be an ex. Because I, yeah, it'd have been all bad. I'd have fucked up it's the church's all money, bad. for real. Yeah. I'd have been still locked up for that. Ain't no talking. What the hell I'm going to go talk, talking about, oh, he said he wasn't going to do it again. What the fuck? I made sure he wasn't going to do it again. He ain't going to do shit again. <laughs> you know, it's sad because his, I will never forget one of his friends in, in the elevator actually mm -hmm. had me by my arms at one point because I was using my yeah. arms so much because I wasn't going to let him get, get that too. zipper. Yeah, they were supposed to mm -hmm. get it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, yeah. Whole, the whole squad gets Yeah, he's supposed to park mm -hmm. all of them. The only reason he stopped them from holding me is because I said, how much of a little bitch are you that you need two other guys in here? And I'm a, I was 115 pounds mm -hmm. at the time. And I said, and you can't do this by yourself? Wow. And that's when he told them to let me go because that was my only shot at making. So that was they get so, down. That obviously was they. That's, that's maybe. how they get down. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because, I mean, what other motherfuckers going to sit back and watch? Yeah. Like, I ain't going to. All their never... job was to keep the elevator from opening. Damn. I don't know if I could watch that on anyone. That's anyway. crazy. Just that's in public crazy. in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's what I'm like, saying. I might have to stay, stay to them. Man, listen. Like that's I said. That's what they do, though, I think. Yeah, that's they get down. Yeah, I think so. I mean, most of the fights that I've been in in my life have been from standing up for other people who yeah. couldn't stand up for themselves. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, I'd have seen that. If I were to ever see that, I'd probably be going to jail, you know. So, yeah. wow. We'll have to talk about that. So, yeah. so you overcome that. So, I mean, now what kind of effects, psychological effects, does that have on you, if any, uh, moving forward in the business? It made me more cautious. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't think I was relaxed before that, right. but it made me more cautious. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I didn't really let it affect my job, mm -hmm. but it, it definitely had a psychological effect on me. I didn't mm -hmm. trust as easy as yeah. I did before. Yeah. I was much more guarded. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And you know I'm like that with you, too. You know what I mean? You know I, I, I ride you. 
pause. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I, I be on your ass. I'm like, man, why are you going there? And well, you, don't wear that. Like, I don't know. don't be talking so much to them. Don't I do know. that, man. Get the fuck in. Get out. You don't need to be friendly with them. That's either. true. I tell you that all the time. I know. On the next episode of the Holding Court podcast, it was just a meeting, and I said, I don't want to go. You were scared. I'm of scared Q of him. Of I was because NWA. Really? I love NWA, but I was like, I don't want to go. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm-mm. Okay, and so I you said thought no. you was gonna run into America's Most Wanted? I, I didn't know. The black hat. He, yeah, I was like, I like Jerry him on records. With the beanie down. Yeah, right. with the beanie. He had yeah. cut his jacket. That's what I thought. Okay. I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs>